Hey there, John Morris here with JohnMorrisOnline.com, and welcome to another episode of The John Morris Show. And in this episode, I'm going to show you how to create an active class and toggle that class from a URL using pure JavaScript and jQuery. So in this particular tutorial, you're going to learn how to find the URL using JavaScript. You're going to learn how to split that URL using a uh, whatever character you'd like to split it by. You're going to use learn how to use the pop method in JavaScript. You're also going to learn how to use conditional statements in JavaScript. And you're going to learn how to target different elements by the attributes that they have and then be able to add a class to that element. All right, so that's what we're going to cover inside this tutorial. So be sure to stay tuned. Now this week's episode is sponsored by the Complete Web Developers course by Rob Percival on Udemy.com. Now, what's great about this course is it really is a comprehensive and complete course that's gonna teach you everything that you need to know to get up and running and making a living as a full-time web developer, from HTML and CSS, to JavaScript, jQuery, WordPress, PHP, MySQL, APIs, mobile apps, the whole kit and caboodle. So if you're looking for a one-stop shop for all of the training that you need, then this course is it. And it's taught by Rob Percival, who's a former mathematics teacher who knows how to explain complex concepts in really easy to understand terms. And that's probably why the course has over 100,000 students and the most five-star ratings of any course on Udemy.com. Now, normally the course runs for $199. However, I've worked out a deal with Rob where you can get the course at a steep 85% discount. So right down below this video, you'll see a link to that course with that coupon code. Just go ahead and click that link and you'll be all set for the discount. Now, onto this week's episode. All right, so let's just take a quick look at what this actually does. So if you see over here on the right-hand side, we have our homepage and we have some different links here. And if we click through these links, you'll notice that this gray color sticks with the menu item. So when we're on that particular page, that menu item is highlighted. Now, oftentimes, and probably the best way to do this is with your server side code. Uh, because it's just a little bit um, more reliable and if the person doesn't have JavaScript enabled in their browser it's still going to work if you do it server side and so forth but there may be instances where you need to do this with JavaScript and also it's good to learn how to do this kind of stuff because you learn how to use different methods and, and so forth so this is what I'm going to show you how to do all right so let's go to our actual document first so I have four pages that are exactly pretty much the same except what is in this h1 tag here so i have uh, the home page which is index i have about.php you can see that changes i have contact and then i have this oh dang it's weird which we'll talk about here in just a second so uh, i'm going to just cover this one because they're all identical except for that one little change so we have our doc type we have our html tag we have our head tag we have our title we're including a style sheet here so uh, I'm not going to talk about the style sheet here. It just gives this some basic styling here. I want to keep focused on the JavaScript, but that style sheet is uh, available with the source code that you'll get with the video. So, uh, you know, that'll be there for you to look at if you want to. Uh, by the way, that brings up a good point. If you're looking for the source code for this video as you go through it, be sure to stay tuned to the end of the video, and I'll make sure to show you how to get it. All right, next thing we do is we include jQuery from the Google CDN because we're going to be using that for our script. And then we include our actual JavaScript here. And we'll cover that. That's going to be the bulk of what we cover here. All right, but we'll get into that in a minute. Then we start our body tag. We have a nav element here. Inside that, we have an unordered list. And then we have our list items. And they are just referencing the different pages that we have here. So home, about, contact, and this eek page. So really straightforward type menu. There's nothing special about this. Nothing, uh, you know, I don't have any data attributes in here you can see. So it's just a really plain, straightforward menu. And then, of course, I have my H1 tag with the text in it. I close the body and close the HTML. So that's our HTML. This is really straightforward HTML. Again, nothing special about this. And it's the same for all of these different pages. 
All right, so let's go ahead then and take a look at our actual script and see what we're doing here. So the first thing that we're doing is we're getting the document, uh, we're waiting till the document's ready so that we can start using jQuery again. If you've watched any of my tutorials, I say this all the time, this is something that you'll pretty much add to every script that you write. It's just gonna uh, make sure that the, the actual document is ready to be manipulated before you start running any of your jQuery code here. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna get the current path and we're gonna find the target link. So what we're doing is we're creating a variable and we're setting that equal to window.location.pathname.split and then dot .pop. So that's a long chain of things that we'll walk through here. So window just returns the window object and you may be familiar with this already. Location then is gonna give you information about the URL of that window. So of course this is going to be the current window that that you're on, the current browser window that you're on, the location of that browser window, and then it's going to give you the path, then we're using path name. And so path name is essentially going to get rid of the domain and give you the path, so everything that comes after the actual domain name. So that's maybe something that's a little different. You may have used window.location before. Here we we're really only concerned with the path name. And so uh, that's what we're grabbing. Now we're going to do a split and we're going to split on this uh, slash character here. So what that does is essentially it takes this little piece of the URL and it creates an array where it splits it based off of these slashes here. So we're going to have an array that in it has snippets as one element, active class as another, and then index.php as another. Okay, so that's what we get once after this split method. And then the last thing that we're going to do to this is we're going to add this pop method, which what that does is it pops off the last element of an array. So the last element of our array is going to be this index.php, and that's what we're concerned with. That's what's going to change as we go from page to page. So all the rest of this is going to be the same. But when we go to about, this will be about.php. When we go to contact, it'll be contact.php. Dot PHP. So that's the information we need in order to know which menu item we happen to be on. So this long chain of, of uh, methods here, objects and methods here, ultimately gets us to where we have this as stored as the variable path, and that's what we need. All right, the next thing that we're going to do then is we're going to account for the home page if the path uh, is empty. So if we came here, and you, you probably know this, but let's go through this real quick. If we get rid of index.php and just go to the folder name, you'll notice that index.php is not at the end here. And so what happens when we do that is that this last, uh, our array when we do this pop here is gonna be empty because there's not, in the URL here, there's not actually anything in that last position. So it's gonna be empty, so we have to account for that, otherwise when we're on the home page here, this would not, if we got rid of this, this would not be highlighted. All right, so to account for that, we just check to see if path is empty. So if path equals this empty space here, then we're gonna set it explicitly to index.php because we can be pretty confident that we're on the home page. All right, so we account for that. And then the last thing that we need to do, or the last two things that we need to do, is we need to target uh, the selector that matches what page we're on. So we need to figure out which one of these menu items corresponds to whatever page we happen to be on. So in this case, we're on index.php. And so the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna do it kind of start off as a standard jQuery selector. So target equals jQuery, and then we're in our selector here and we're gonna target our nav element. So everything, if you'll remember, is inside this nav element, so we're gonna target that. Then we're gonna to need to target the anchor tag, because that's what we're targeting is these links. Um, and that's the thing, if you look at the styling, that has the that uh, has all of the padding around it. So this may actually change. Uh, that's one thing to keep in mind. If, you, if the color, that if what you're trying to change here isn't the anchor tag, depending on how your style is set up, this may need to change to accommodate that. Most of the time though, you'll find that it's the anchor tag that is what you're gonna need to change the background color of here, okay? So it's usually whatever your hover element is here. See how these hover, whatever your hover element is, is, is usually the same thing and it really should be your anchor tag. All right, so we're gonna target 
uh, again, the nav element, the anchor tags within it, and then we want a specific one. So we want the the anchor that has this attribute. So these uh, these brackets here allow us to target the attributes of a specific anchor tag. So we want the anchor tag that has an href that is equal to what we calculated to path. So we want it when we're on the index page, we want the anchor tag that has an href of index.php. So index.php right here. When we're on the about page, we want the one that has about.php. And so that's why we pass this in as a variable because we've got what page we're on and now we want to find the element that corresponds to the page we're on. So that's what this uh, little section does right here. Okay, so that helps us to target the correct anchor tag. Now, once we have that, that's the hard part. Then all we need to do, we've set created this variable, variable card called target. Then we just need to add a class to that, which is active. And so if we inspect this element, you'll see that this uh, anchor tag has a class of active, active added to it. And you can see over here, then all we're doing in our CSS is we're giving that particular element that has active added to it a different background color. So pretty straightforward setup of doing this. Once you get through some of this more complicated kind of JavaScript and jQuery, adding the actual class is easy to do. So that's it. That's how you are able to target different anchor tags in your menu based off the URL you ha happen to be on and be able to add an active class to them using jQuery. Now, if you want to get access to this source code, then the way to do that is to head on over to johnmorrisonline.com slash resources. Or if you're on my website, you can simply click the resources tab right up here. And that will take you to my web developer resources page. Now, I have a whole all kinds of web developer resources on here from classes to the different tools that I use. But if you scroll down to the bottom here, then you'll see a section called code snippets. And you'll see PHP code snippets, WordPress code snippets, and Genesis code snippets. So you can go ahead and click on through to the code snippets that apply for the video you're watching, and you'll be able to get access to th that code snippet. Now, if we click here, for example, on PHP code snippets, then we will be taken to that page and you'll see all of the different code snippets here. And you can click through and you'll get the video, you'll get the description, and you'll get the code snippet as well. So again, head on over to johnmorrisonline.com slash resources. Head on down to the code snippet section to get access to the snippet that you're after. Of course, while you're here, you might as well look around and see some of the other developer tools and courses that I have available here that are going to help you down your path of becoming a web developer. And since I'm constantly adding to this page, then you might as well bookmark this page and check back often so you can see all of the things that I've added and get access to all of the tools and snippets and courses and things that I'm using throughout my career. All right, that'll do it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.